What's up dudes? You guys are getting raw workflow today. Stuff is everywhere. Ever since I uploaded the last video, I've been hard at it trying to put all this stuff back together so we can start this up and hear the engine run with the new intake manifold. I've been beside myself with the amount of success the last video got. It's, it's mind blowing to see how much support and enthusiasm you guys have for the stuff that I'm building. So I wanted to keep that momentum going and put this thing back together. I never intended for the car to be running anywhere in the near future. I was planning on uh, changing the head, changing the ignition system, changing the cooling system. I was gonna rewire the car, put an aftermarket ECU in this thing. So this was a long-term project. I <laughs> didn't expect the excitement of, you know, wanting to hear this thing running, but since you guys are excited, I'm excited too. So I've been thrashing on this, trying to get it all, all back together, at least temporarily until I can do the other things in the future. Making this throttle linkage setup took me pretty much this entire day today. Um, the problem is the original throttle actuated this way and the cable came around the back side of the head and this one's 90 degrees to that. So there's not really a good place to put the cable. If you come around the front of the head, you know, you have to make, it's too much of an angle to get over here to this, this piece where the stock one is. Um, so I wanted to come through the head. In order to do that, I had to cut the cable in half and, so I could get this hardware off so I could fish it through. That way I didn't have to take the timing cover off. But even still, it's, it had to make a pretty big turn to get over there. So I either needed to bring this out or the other thing I considered was taking the stock throttle body and putting it like over here so that the cable could run to it and then from the opposite side, it could pull this from the back. So. Glad I didn't go with that uh, funky Rube Goldberg idea, so this is what I did instead. This is the factory Miata lever and shaft, so I cut it off of the old throttle body, um, RIP throttle body, and I got a 12 millimeter socket which fits the nut on the end of this motorcycle throttle body, and I drilled a hole in it which took the whole drill bit to do because even though this is cheap, it's super hard stuff. Drilling sockets is, is definitely no fun. I pressed it in there, put a little tack on it just for good measure, and then I welded a bolt um, to this and threaded it through here. So this, this um, Triumph throttle body isn't modified at all. It can still be used on a bike if need be. Um, and if you just take this nut off, you can take the uh, adapter off the front. So this was just to keep it stable so it wouldn't wobble, um, but it, uh, it engages really nice. There's no play or anything. So um, I think that's gonna work out well. And after this was made, the only thing left to do was put the holder for the outside of the throttle cable. It was hard to get a good distance because of this stupid junction that I had to make um, so that I could get nice lack of slack on the cable and also be able to hit wide open throttle before this touches the end of that. So it's adjusted pretty good right now. I can get wide open throttle um, and this is, this is temporary stuff anyway until I design a nicer system. And then this stupid thing took me all day yesterday to make. So here's the factory Miata throttle position sensor. Here's your Triumph carb or throttle body. And this is a quarter inch to three eighths adapter. I noticed that um, it's better if I take this off. Let me, let me unscrew this thing so I can show you. So this is what the engagement looks like on the stock throttle body. And then here is the shaft on the Triumph throttle body. Quite a big difference. It doesn't uh, come close to mating. And I didn't want to modify this thing. I wanted to keep as much stock as I could and make the correct adapters because the intention is going to be to make this into a kit that's easily installed. So this is just an experiment though. What I did was I noticed that this looked like it was about a quarter inch wide at the narrowest point of the rectangle. So I got a quarter inch to three eighths adapter and I made a shaft that was similar in dimensions to this. I put it in here and smashed it into shape. So as a, as a pretty decent fit, there's a little bit of a play, but um, this is all temporary experimental stuff. So we'll make a better one in the future. And then I ground down the, uh, the three eighths side of the adapter so that it would fit in the Miata one. Once I did that, it, uh, it made it up well. Um, it put it in the same, there was a little bit of a tension on the sensor in the stock configuration, so I think it will read exactly the same. Um, the only issue was the holes didn't line up. So what I did to make all the holes line up was I pushed the metal inserts out of the stock housing by heating them up and pushing them out with a soldering gun. I inserted these threads into the throttle body, and then I got the threads and the 
heat set insert really hot and then I smushed the throttle body, the TPS down on top of it. So now I can thread these all the way down. I thread this brass piece down as a stopper, twist it down just with a pair of pliers. And now there is no smushing force from the TPS down onto the adapter and the throttle body, so it's not gonna bind. Um, but also this can't move because it's threaded on both sides and then jammed shut with this. So Obviously it's pretty uh, crude and archaic looking, but it gives me an idea of what I need to do in the future for a nicer piece. So this is what I did with the cooling system. I took the radiator and I angled it, angled the top forward a little bit to help the air come up because I'm going to do some hood louvers in order to evacuate all that nasty lift and hot air. And this is the poor man's coolant reroute. I'm not going to go into full detail in today's video, but um, I'll tell you what I spent. It was about 20 bucks for all the aluminum tubing here, uh, eight bucks for the housing and whatever the hose cost. I think the hose is maybe another 20 bucks. So pretty affordable. Um, what I had to do, this is all eventually going to go away. I'm going to take this neck off and put a plate here and then have to do something with the uh, water temperature senders. Um, but for now I just looped it around. I put this um, housing on backwards and then I put the radiator so it went under the sway bar um, so that I could run the hose to there. So put that together nice and quick. I'm gonna have to extend the uh, factory sensor wire to get to here now, but um, that'll be pretty simple, just three wires. So before I bolt all this together, there's a couple things about the prints in particular that I wanted to show you guys, starting with this upper plenum. So I printed this in two, space, two pieces because of bed size limitations. So you can see here, uh, this is the seam where I glued it together. This is made with uh, ABS-like material called ASA, um, real similar to ABS, and it bonds together really well with acetone or MEK. Now I had a print failure on the second piece. You can see this line right here. Um, so I just got bad layer separation right there. I tried to hide it with the paint but uh, this thing already doesn't look pretty anyways because of the grease spots. I don't really have a big capacity for printing right now just because of the hardware that I'm working with. Um, so I'm working towards a solution for that, but um, nothing I can really do to go into production with parts like this right now. So this is another failure that I had. This here is the carbon fiber nylon. I originally intended to do the manifold in this material because this piece was intended to be a final print. This is freaking $75 worth of, with her material right here. But you can see through the rippling right here, I had an issue. What happened was the print head came loose. So it was this way for one layer and this way for another layer. And you got all this weird like deformity going on. I was also worried about the structural integrity of it because not only did it damage the surface finish, you know, but inside the layers weren't bonding on top of each other. So I didn't really know how well that was gonna work. And then also because of that, um, I had a bad tolerance right here where the uh, throttle body was supposed to go in. So another piece of waste from just, just cheap hardware really. I mean, stuff that I guess could be tuned, but um, makes it hard to you know go into production with cheap stuff like that. So, but in any case, we're testing it out and making changes as we go and uh, we'll see what kind of solution we have to that in the future. Yeah, let's, uh, let's put more stuff together and see if we can get this thing running. Hold up, hold that thought. Something else I gotta show you, it's with these things. So, you know the Venturi system that I wanna test out on the dyno? I'm already having an issue with it because I'm having a hard time finding a hose that's flexible enough to make these short jumps, but also thick enough that it won't fold over on itself when you go to make the bend. So I want you guys to tell me uh, if you want me to keep messing with this and try to get it to work so that we can at least see if the concept is gonna make any changes or what I'm leaning towards is abandoning the whole Venturi thing because even if it does have a positive impact, it's gonna be very small. But you guys let me know in the comments whether you want me to keep doing R&D on these things or if I should focus that energy on creating a better shape for the stack itself and optimizing that way. Either way, I'll still be doing dyno tests. Oh, these are backwards. 
I'll still do back-to-back -back dyno tests and test like different shapes and different links and all that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, in one scenario, I'll just give up on the tiny tubes. All right, guys, here we go. We're popping this guy on. We're gonna call it a night, let all that RTV dry. I know you guys love that RTV, love it. And we will come back tomorrow, finish the rest of the assembly, see what happens. All right, dudes, moment of truth. If it starts at all, I know that it's not going to idle very well because there's no idle valve hooked up. But um, let's let's do it. Let's see what happens. Oh, gotta let the O2 sensor warm up for a second. Got a little countdown on the display back here. The uh, it has a heating element built in so that it's not too cold when you go to fire it up. Um, if it is too cold, then you can foul it by the exhaust gas hitting it before it's ready and warm to give a good reading. So that is warmed up. We got ignition. 